Now, very good morning to you. You are watching Newsline on Friday morning. I am Satran Haparachi. Today we are going to talk to senior lawyer Mr. Gomin Dasri. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be with you at all any time. Yes, yes. Now um, let me get to the topic straight away because uh, we have this trend of losing the. Uh, we can't finish what we want to talk about in the given half an hour. So I'm going to get to the topic straight away. Uh, we saw yesterday on the Daily Mirror a news report on two defence titans, if I may put it that way, uh, the former defence secretary of our country and uh, the army general, army commander of his choice, then General uh, now Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca. Uh, we saw a story on how um, uh, the former defence secretary has accused. Sarat Fonseca of the murders of Lassan Vikramatunga and uh, we involved in the case of uh, Keith Noya's abduction. And uh, Sarat Fonseca on the other hand has said, if you have any information, you have to go and give it to the CID. Before we get to the questions, uh, Mr. Dastri, I am going to uh, show you that clip uh, if in case you were stuck in a queue trying to fill up your tanks uh, because the government has decided to increase the fuel prices. Here is a look at that report. In the Daily Mirror report, Gotabia Rajapaksa makes claim that the key technical evidence presented by the CID to courts were unearthed during the Rajapaksa administration. Speaking to the Daily Mirror last week, Rajapaksa recalled the records of telephone conversations and other evidence were unearthed during their time. According to Rajapaksa, immediately after these incidents, they were able to unearth all this evidence. He further said, that he ordered all the intelligence agencies to conduct investigations to identify the perpetrators. He specifically recalled doing so in connection with the murder of Vikramatunga and the abduction and assault of Noya. The paper quoted the former defense secretary as saying, quote, I knew definitely that Sarat Fonseca was behind these crimes, unquote. According to Rajapaksa, Despite him knowing that the former army commander was behind these incidents, he still allowed the CID to obtain the correct evidence and conduct investigations. He further says he did not take action because he did not want to gain political advantage over it. Minister Sarat Fonseca says if Gotabe Rajapaksa is a self-respecting person, he should come out and reveal the truth and make available the information he has to the CID instead of levelling wild accusations against him in the media. Sarat Fonseca asserted, when the police are closing in on Gotabe Rajapaksa, this is what Rajapaksa does. He noted, rather than defending himself, Rajapaksa sends his lawyers running to the Supreme Court to get rulings preventing him from being arrested. Fonseca stressed, quote-unquote, the day I am accused, I will defend myself like a lion, not like a coward. Mr. Dastri, a lot of accusations and counter-accusations by two big people in our country, but like every other incident in our country, this comes down to a situation where people are pointing fingers at each other and the actual matter, justice to these people have not been meted out. The, the perpetrators have not been found out. What is your view on this? Uh, this is uh, Lasanta Vikramatunga and Keith Noy would have become history because nothing, it would have been another unsolved murder. Because still, three years into the government, nobody has found who is to be blamed. So it's a very sad situation when you find various uh, efforts being made that the police are very efficient, that they are able to uncover uh, mysteries and uh, find the killers. This has remained two very significant murders in recent times uh, have remained totally undetected. So here is once again the issue of racing because police are making some headway. Let me tell you one thing. During that time I played a role in anti-terrorist activity because I was very much against terrorism. I was not in favor of this government or that government, but I was certainly in favor of a government that was going after terrorism. And Rani Vikram Singh's government did not. So I could say I was indirectly a participant with the last government in tracking down terrorism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when I was doing that, I ran to a guy called Shani Abhisekar, who was also featured in the article. Now, Shani, at that time, I must say this in his favor, he gave me a report which showed government which was then looking very rosy was not all that popular and I gave him a very patient hearing. In fact, I was admiring him. He is a man who may have thought that I was with the government but openly when I was, uh, he met me on the directions of Gotabe Rajapaksa, he spoke the absolute honest truth 
which I thought was very frank admission and he is now in charge of this. You are uh, speaking about the government before 2015, to, the uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa. Mahindra, during Mahindra Rajapaksa's time <coughs> and he was very critical of Mahindra Rajapaksa's administration, especially the kind of treatment the people in the north were receiving. I didn't want to tell this to Gotabe, I didn't want to bring, uh, bring this officer's name, I just asked Gotabe very casually, what do you think of Shani Abhisekara? He told me he's a very good officer and he was very, he said he is very correct and very proper. So really I would say that Shani Abhisekara is now doing the investigation and his investigations did not in any way point any finger at anybody. Yesterday's report he was very balanced. Now <coughs> this tiff between the two military people who were the best of friends in, in time. But remember all this happened at a time when they were seeking to eliminate the LTT. So you may have to give a little cover for both in the sense that here are two key people if they fell out on the murder of Lasanta Vikramsin and Keith Neuer then that the main abduction, abduction, and assault, assault, or, abduction and assault of one person and the death of the another well, their, their prime target of going after the LTT and whom they suspected were pro-LTT supporters would have been in jeopardy. So that may be a reason, but I must say, tell you this. Gotabe Rajapaksa, if he had the information, should have continued investigations. He had no business to give it up. And Sarat Fonseca should have also assisted in every way. Sarat Fonseca's record is very poor because he had accused the president of being uh, not speaking the correct position. Hmm. But now I find that he, the Daily Mirror same day carried an article right in top which I think belittled R R Fonseca very much that he is responsible for making statements that are not correct. In other words, he was saying that he did not say that of Fonseca, of, of the <coughs> president, Sirisena. So I don't know what reliance you can place on Sarat Fonseca, but I can tell you Gotabe thinks he is the coming man, but my prediction is the Rajapaksas will come back, if at all, only for five years. You will not hear any name of a Rajapaksa after five years, because Gotabe has in his team the Vyatmaga, some of the most people who are, were condemned not suitable mm. for, for the onward journey. So I think both are playing politics, both are in, seeking the limelight, now trying to be trying to point fingers at each other for the murder of a person they would have jointly have preferred and may have been the reason why nothing surfaced during Mr. this time. Mr. Dastri, now you, you yourself mentioned it, uh, Gotabe, people are speaking about Gotabe Rajapaksa coming into the political front again. People are also speaking about uh, Sarat Fonseca's role. A certain group is talking about Sarat Fonseca's role when it comes to maybe a presidential election in 2020. But do you think that this, uh, like, like we have seen in the past, we have seen how uh, the murder of Wasim Tajuddin came up when an election was closed, things like that. Do you think uh, both parties, willingly or unwillingly, are participating in a political uh, fiasco, a political drama? I would think the government would try to fix Gotabe Rajapaksa and Gotabe Rajapaksa would be... I, I cannot understand why Gotabe Rajapaksa still doesn't get rid of his dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he says things that America is going to help him at the last, last moment, well, then he's taking quite a tricky chance because America can delay and that will debar him from contesting. Mm -hmm. But why is he holding to that dual citizenship because it doesn't mean anything to him unless it means something that he's an American citizen and he has certain rights that he can exercise if he's arrested. Mm -hmm. But I can't <coughs> understand why he's not holding himself as an eligible candidate because even now he has a major handicap of having to overcome the hurdle of giving up one citizenship which he could do, do right away mm -hmm. because closer to the date they'll say that to an accusation that can be made against him that he's playing for, with America mm -hmm. and America is not a popular country in this region in this kind of activity yeah. and they, we know what they did during the period when we were in the height of terrorism yes. so they are not popular and I think Gotabe being right this is not getting the right message across to the people and furthermore I'm not at all happy with his team 
there are people I don't want to name names but there are people who have a very shady f- uh, past mm. in that outfit who are now his prominent men because Gotabe I tell you is a very good man mm. you can work with him I worked with him very closely mm-hmm. and he's a easy guy to work because if you work if you're honest he gives you total clearance but his problem is he doesn't understand politics and he can very well take the worst of Rajabaksa's people whom Rajabaksa would want to dump and some of them are there in his Vyat Magar, a program they asked me last time to speak to, I refused. I think I was the only one who refused because most of the others who went were told. Mm. I was told, well, you can, I can give you three minutes. I said, my dear friend, it was not Gotabe who spoke, somebody else. Gotabe would have given me much more time if he spoke. I said, you can, I can probably thank you for inviting me and then sit down. I'm not going to lend my name for that, that kind of support. Mr. Dasi, uh I want to move uh, on from this particular topic to another topic that the people are uh, concerned about and, and, and uh, would like your opinion on as a legal expert and a senior lawyer in our country, the Judicature Bill that was uh, passed in Parliament uh, uh, in the past few days and it, it, lots of talk about it. Uh, they said that the predecessors of the current uh, Justice Minister Taratatukoro could not get it done and um, there were people who were stopping it, uh, people who were accused of murders were trying to stop this from coming in. Uh, all sorts of things were said uh, by uh, Dr. Rajit Senaratna as well regarding this topic. A lot of people spoke about it, uh, to be fair. But finally, to the people of this country, what does this judicature bill mean? The Judicate Act is probably, I have not myself studied very carefully, I must tell you, confess that to yes. begin with. But I must say that it, if the intention is to make the judicial process accelerate the process, I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. Because much of the criticism today is judiciary is too slow. Mm-hmm. That is correct. But today, remember, we have the best judiciary I ever faced. And that is because it is under this government, give them the credit. I'm not a support this government by any means, but there has been a definite improvement in the judicial officers. I say that right from the Chief Justice right down to the Supreme Court is what is brilliant best. I have been before the Supreme Court, it had good judges. I, there were many judges whom I didn't like at all, like Sarat Silva, but he was a good judge as a Supreme Court judge, he was an intelligent man, but he was very political. Now we have a Supreme Court that is not political, that is very reasonable and has some excellent people in it, and much of the credit should go to the present government. Mm. And people are not scared, the judiciary is coming up. Mm. But the judiciary did not come up and needs to be blamed because until Justice Siripavan resigned, I think things were pretty bleak. Mm -hmm. I say that because if you remember today much of the problem is because of the 19th amendment. Everyone wants to get rid of the 19th. But just as much, most people want 13th also out. And there are certain features in the 13th that should be taken off. Mm -hmm. But there are other features which can never be taken off. For example, the elimination of that white elephant, the the 13th, the provincial council. No government can ever do that because if they do, they lose their second team altogether and they will cross over. Mm -hmm. So that I don't think Mahindra Rajapaksa or Anil Vikram Singh or the UNP or the SLP or the Sirisena could have the courage to dismantle the provincial council system, which is very important. Hmm. But notwithstanding that, they can take over the provisions, provisions relating merger, which has been found to be uh, in, uh, improperly constituted. If you remember, not the eastern province had even elections. Hmm. But now, after that judgment, clearly it's established that it was illegal because very clearly it needed a referendum. The referendum was never held. Mm. So that it was certainly a, a improper exercise. I think those things should be removed from the constitution. For example, land should be given to, land has been, it has been fortunately, I remember IAP in the case and got land back to the center. Mm. But there was, a, there was Silva and Shirani Bandarnaika who gave emphatic decisions that the land had devolved on the, uh, on the on the provincial governments and provincial governments are distributing land to all and sundry. So fortunately now it has been found that land all is vested in the hands of the president. Yeah. So we must make the president's hands stronger because according to Supreme Court which I argued 
clearly that was a mistake made by the Indians. They thought didn't want to give it to the center, to the periphery, but they failed because they didn't want to dismantle the powers of the president. They didn't see that clause because in the second in the schedule reading with the t- land provisions, there's a clear indication that all land is vested with the president. Mm. So that fortunately that has saved us from a tricky situation. Indians, you remember when I brought that provision and won that case. There were only two people who opposed me on, on, in media. One is G- Gaman Pillar. I can understand he lost a major f- point in, that he was attacking, and the other was Dian Jatilka, who is, I think, jealous of anybody who makes any headway. Except for that, I think everybody was commend, uh, commended that decision, and even India is very happy with the decision because it's a decision of Supreme Court and it's a decision which overwhelmingly approved by everybody because thereafter there are several judgments that have all come to the same conclusion. So we have a fortunate aspect but I think Jaya Vardhan was at a very weak moment. He had to succumb to the Indian pressure, Rajiv Gandhi and the Gandhi family and they had Sri Lanka in an absolute knot there. And I think when you amend the 19th amendment, we have to amend the 13th also because that has created a lot of agitation. But I don't think this government will do either and that is correct because governments can't do it without a two-third majority. Mr. Dayasri, now when uh, people say the judiciary, the judicial process in our country takes a long time, it is also because, it, it, the, in my understanding at least, there are a lot of other factors that affect it. Maybe the evidence gathering takes time. Uh, things like that. When you say you expedite certain cases, let's say, especially when, when it comes to bribery and corruption cases, th- these these needs uh, proper investigation into uh, proper evidence, uh, or else the court can decide to put away the case with, with, with the lack of the evidence. So when things like that happen, when you say we expedite the cases, or when you say uh, this amount of judges are going to hear this case in this amount of time. Uh, I'm just looking at the practicality here. I think that's a very good question you asked me. That is correct. Judicator can only give the formalities to accelerate the process. But there's a great problem here. Hmm. It's the political influence. Now, I know a very important case, that the case against the uh, Tamil terrorist movement that was filed in court never got off the ground hmm. because judges, lawyers, AG's department must all act as a coordinated group, do their functions properly, not together, but act accordingly. But I think there's a lot of political pressure. Now look at it. There are ministers who have been accused of certain acts. There are MPs being accused of acts. But all acts, how many of those in the government parliamentary group who are ministers mm. have allegations made against them. How many have those allegations been, even charges been brought? They are not being investigated, only one. So there is discrimination at all points and whatever Judicature Act comes into operation, it is meaningless if political pressure is used, if the Attorney General succumbs to it. And I am sad to say this, Attorney General is succumbing to political pressures. He, is, he acts on a very selective basis. You must act openly. You must bring anyone who is found guilty to court. And you should have nothing to fear because, say, I'm ch- accused, I should go stand trial because I would only want to do my best to get myself exonerated. Mm. But so it's helpful both from the accused's point of view and from the accuser's point of view because what, the person who accuses gets maybe successful in the prosecution just as much as the defense may be successful in the defense. So for either part, it's best to get themselves a clean sh- bill of health at the end of a trial. Uh, so what, does, what this Adjudicator Act does mm. is to accelerate the process, have more judges, have more courts, have systems of leading evidence without all the intricacies of the evidence ordinance. All that is helpful. But what is very more important is the Judicial Service Commission. Remember, Judicial Service Commission has no powers of administering justice. That's a matter for courts. Judicial Service can have the, only the right to affect matters concerning judicial officers. They mm. can transfer, they can improve their salary structure, they can discipline them, but they can't ask them to change judgments. And I had a recent case where I, I, where I accused bias against this uh, judge and the Supreme Court. After he said in court, 
that he didn't want to hear the case after hearing both parties on the merit, the Supreme Court compelled him to hear the case, not the Supreme Court, the judicial service compelled to him to hear the case. Of course, all that happened during the time Justice Sri Baba was at head. Now that he's gone, now he sits comfortably in the in the commercial bank directorate, I think things have improved very much more. And I'm happy to say that we have probably the best Supreme Court and the most impartial independent Supreme Court that I ever found <coughs> in my lifetime. Mr. Dasi, now another point that the people are concerned about uh, is that a lot of or three, four na big names uh, that comes to your mind when, when you speak about corruption of this government and the corruption of the former government are all abroad, are all overseas. Uh, to name a few, Arjuna Mahendran to start with, Udayanga Viratunga, Jali Vikram Surya, these are the names that people always talk about. We get reports on them in the media. Now, using a loophole in the system or using a loophole in the parliamentary system, the fact that they haven't ratified uh, certain uh, agreements that they have, uh, certain uh, treaties that they have put in place, these people remain at large up to date, um, especially in the Udyanga Viratunga case. Now, once again, isn't it uh, the lack of action or the inaction of the public representatives that has caused this situation? It is once again, I said, political realities you have to face, but, but here there is a simple process. The, the, the Attorney General should first tell the government, you get the act right, I mm. mean, get, uh, sanction, sanction, I mean, it, it has, bring it before Parliament mm. and get it sanctioned because everybody will, uh, will have to vote for it, you can't have culprits room in the city. I mean, you can't have Raja Mahend Arjuna Mahendran will certainly be found. They would have a lot of support, but the mm. government is not presenting it as a bill. So, without having, wasting so much money, sending uh, legal teams abroad to get them uh, back to the island, mm. they should get the act very simply place it in parliament. Then, or put it in an order paper, then the public can go to a Supreme Court, challenge the bill, but the, or the act or the resolution and then pass it with the necessary majority. You don't need a simple two-third majority, a simple majority is adequate. Why is the government not doing Why is the Attorney General not doing Why is the officers of the Attorney General's department happily going around the world, seeing the world without uh, attending to what is very simple, tell the without wasting time and money of the people, they should say, get the act right, go to parliament, get the bill passed. And then we are through. Otherwise, if the bill is pa not passed, well, this gentleman can be, uh, may, may seek sanctuary in third countries. Mm. Mr. Dasi, now, once again, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, bring this around and ask you uh, a lot of things like this. I've, I've only spoken to you about uh, the legal angle and matters that have a legal uh, situation behind them. But there are a lot of instances in our country where the inaction has caused a lot of money, a lot of other things, a lot of damage to the country. We can take an example from this government itself. If the Prime Minister acted uh, according to the system that was in place, we wouldn't have ended up with the bond scam. Uh, if, if the CEB matter was taken into consideration at the due time, we wouldn't have a power crisis. Things like this. Public representatives are not acting to actually achieve the aspirations of the people, the reason why they have been appointed there. If I put it that way, would you agree with me? I will agree partially because not only the public uh, uh, authority, uh, elected authorities, but even the public servants must be blamed. Mm. Public servants have become so politicized that they do exactly what the minister wants. Mm. And they, you, they only realize it when they are out of office. The very officers who help them will trash them thereafter, right. won't look at them. We, what we need is an independent public service. There is no such thing. They are all political animals. Stooges and psychophants have gone up while the honourable people have sl slided down. Yeah. So what we need is a public service and a political system that is honest and fair. Yeah. And also, mind you, I think it's very important that the private sector also be held ac accountable. If you look at the, all these things of all the bribery and corruption, Bottom line is the private sector. Arjuna Mahendran, the the people who are there, Palipana and Palihenas and uh, Palisenas. Palisenas and uh, Aloysius, who they are all private sector. Now, why is it that the Bribery Act? Why is it that the uh, fundamental rights provisions don't apply to the public uh, private sector? Hmm. So I think not all, many of these things 
they should bring the pri- private sector also into it so the private sector is held accountable i mean i remember a case where sarat silva made very uh, nasty allegations against a certain very high officials of uh, john kills uh, company mm. so i mean there were, were reasons why the sarat silva made i mean i'm not admirer of sarat silva but he did many he was a bold courageous judge so that we have to act we can't blame the public representatives public representatives records is dismal so is the public servant mm. and so is the private sector so or, and the public sector so that i blame both the public sector and the private sector which helps the corruption to go on it is individuals the media that is only taking this issue media and individuals are not sufficient even the ngos they have their own favorites mm. so we have to be, you do a very good job here at sirasa you are at uh, tv1 i would and so does many of the newspapers i think daily mirror does an excellent job ranjit pijab or the most papers though he has political inclinations and he is a very fine man so that i think we have a future but are there people bold enough to act courageous to speak i am a disgrace I, on we really, am ashamed of the lawyers they either they speak rot when they get on shows but they don't make the, they don't point their finger at what should be pointed and they are totally independent people earning good salaries you can easily make a lot of money as lawyers but they are scared they want they want to play ball with the government they want to appear for everybody they say they'll never get into a controversy i think i'm too old to be in shows like this you must see young people here but will they we will bring people like my trigun ratna we bring people with credibility who have earned respect and your service then will improve it itself thank you very much mr dasri for joining us this morning uh, it's always interesting to talk to you and get your opinion thank on you. uh, what is happening in our country in terms of the legal background and in terms of other aspects as well so once again thank you for agreeing to being on the show before going off to a wonderful holiday uh, once again we will join you monday with a guest of this nation interesting person to talk to who has a broad idea of what's happening around us thank you very much for watching take care